It's the 18th of January, I am at the entrance to the Rotherhithe Tunnel, and I'm about to do something generally considered fairly inadvisable. Namely, walking through it. The Rotherhithe Tunnel was opened in 1908 to provide a road link between the Surrey Commercial Docks and the West India Docks. It was designed by the London County Council's engineer, Sir Morris Fitzmorris, which frankly sounds like a made-up name. Construction took four years. The drill blades of the tunnelling shield survive as an arch at the entrance here. It's actually a Great Head Moyer tunnelling shield. Oh yes, I know the drill. All right, here I go. Of course, when the tunnel was built, the roads of London were very different, with the majority of traffic being hauled by horses. As a result, the tunnel now has far more traffic than it was ever designed to handle. Heavy goods vehicles are banned, and there's a 20 mile per hour speed limit. For a while, it was also the only bus route in London to require the use of minibuses. Ironically, these days, horse-drawn vehicles are also banned. The tunnel has a sharp curve at each end. A popular story has it that this is to prevent horses from getting excited by the sudden appearance of daylight, but I'm afraid the real story is not so interesting. The real reason is that it's easier to dig a straight tunnel than a bendy one, so they decided to get the bendy bits of the tunnel out of the way at the start before they came to the docks and the river. Unfortunately, this also means that exhaust fumes can't easily escape, so that's another fun hazard for the foolhardy pedestrian. <coughs> well, that didn't sound healthy. This is stupid. This was a stupid idea. I am stupid. This stretch of pavement is distressingly narrow, I have to say. There's actually a reason for that, past me. The technology simply didn't exist to build the tunnel any wider in 1904, and this is one of several reasons why this tunnel is considered to be the 10th most dangerous tunnel in Europe, and why, even though it does have a walkway on either side, it's not exactly smart to do... Th oh, right. I guess I must be under the Thames by now. That's weird. The tunnel has four ventilation shafts. Shafts two and three, along with their staircases, are grade two listed and you can actually see them from ground level on the riverfront. However, the staircases are no longer in use. That's the halfway point. I might actually survive this. Another curiosity of the tunnel is that it was originally supposed to entirely avoid the East London line, now the overground, but due to a last minute change of plans, the approach road actually cuts right through Rotherhive Station, and you can see it from the platforms. So about a minute ago, I actually bumped into two other people coming the other way which I really did not expect. Like, I understand the number of pedestrians you get in this tunnel averages about 20 a day, so... Yeah, what are the chances, eh? Cyclists, however, are rather more common at 150 to 200 a day, so keep an ear out in the tunnel lest you find your backside turned into an improvised bike rack. Man, look at the sit on these tiles. I'd imagine my lungs look pretty much the same. I actually got a bit of a headache. Don't know if that's the exhaust fumes or all the beer I had last night. Oh my goodness. Do you see? The light at the end of the tunnel. It's OK, guys. I'm going to live. Or was I?
yeah, I was fine. Speaking subjectively, walking through the tunnel is a very unpleasant experience. It's hot, noisy, dirty, and it seems to go on forever. The fumes do get to you after a while, and the entire enterprise feels very unsafe. So what's the verdict? Well, a 1908 newspaper report on the opening described the tunnel as the largest boring work in the world, and I do agree that walking the tunnel is indeed excessively boring when you're not in fear of your life. In conclusion, 1 out of 10 would not recommend.